Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We're back here at Dave's Garage at Dave's Garage 249. Thanks for checking my channel out. Uh, and uh, shout out to all the new subscribers and uh, people that are looking. Um, before we get started on the Mac Cruise Liner model project, I wanted to show you. I dug this out. This is a model car kit. There's a few pieces missing, but this thing is dated uh, 1947. And uh, see if it'll focus. Uh, Comet. And this is what you got was uh, some carved uh, balsa or basswood. I think this is basswood. Uh, this, this is balsa wood. Uh, probably makes part of the cockpit. And uh, you got some uh, pressed, some kind of a pressed wood. Or actually, I think these are just turned on lathe wheels. And there are some axles and uh, some instructions and some here's how you can make uh, things out of the house and this was a co2 powered uh, model you'd put a co2 cartridge in the tail end of it and smack it with a hammer uh, right there uh, keep co2 cartridges away from heat <laughs> uh, interesting stuff and uh, I, uh, anyways uh, so you know, when you look at model kits nowadays and you complain about them, it's kind of like, well, look at what they did in the 40s. Uh, they had to use their imagination. So, uh, getting over here to this Mack Cruise Liner, a uh, few things. Instructions are, and somebody made a comment, uh, the instructions are kind of vague, and yeah, they are. Uh, here's just a few examples of things that, uh, notice this part 64 and 65 uh, which part is 64 and which part is 65? Uh, I was confused. And uh, something else that uh, is interesting is that the uh, layout of the part numbers doesn't coincide with what's on the parts trees, which means that those probably came from other kits. And uh, so you have to do some uh attention to detail looking for the parts that you need that are called out on the instructions and the uh, tab numbers on the kit um, don't really uh, line up let's go with this they don't really match what the instruction sheet is saying so that uh, causes a little bit of extra work but it's a model kit and that's just to get you in the ballpark uh, I did the engine block and the transmission halves and uh, I put the transmission mount on so I could set the thing in the frame and make sure that it was located in the right spot. Uh, done some work on the cab and fitting the, uh, this is where the cab mount hinges go and uh, there's the cab mount hinges and then comparing that to the mounts that are on the front of the chassis. Um, this is my best guess right now. I have a feeling that those will be coming off and being moved. Uh, another thing that wasn't very clear was where the rear cab uh, mounts locate. And the way I had to figure it out is I uh, figured out if I locate the fuel tank, then uh, that revealed where this, uh, there it goes right there, where this cross member would go. Uh, Chassis is pretty square and straight. Um, I built it right here on this uh, granite surface plate. Um, the uh, trunnion that supports the uh, the rear axle as assembly and the springs that is a source of uh, concern. I would be uh, fit that completely before you glue it on. The angles don't match. Uh, it will not be square if you assemble it as is, and uh, so I had to make some adjustments. And these uh, these springs, the that mount on the trunnion, I'm not going to glue them, uh, and they they don't show very clearly on the on the uh, drawings. But there's uh, like notches and keyways that keep you from getting the wrong ones on the wrong side and uh, locate them but uh, the trunnion cross bar can just be located anywhere literally 180 degrees so 
Uh, what I did is using the tester cement, which takes a, a while to set, I put it all together and then adjusted everything. And I'm not going to glue. The axles will hold the springs in place. They're not going to come off once the axles are assembled and put on. So I'm not going to glue that. So that way, the, the chassis can kind of flex back and forth and keep all six, all three axles, I'd say, uh, on a flat surface and just give it a little bit of flexibility. So um, I'm really happy with the squareness of the chassis. I think uh, the, the uh, frames are parallel and uh, everything's within, you know, five or ten thousandths of an inch as far as alignment and height and um, straightness. So uh, I think I can build off of that. And uh, I've been using a lot of these little teeny clamps. So there's my, here's my hand to give you a scale to kind of uh, lock pieces together because there's a, a lot of the molds and stuff, I, the parts are a little bit twisted or warped or uh, and so I uh, need to clamp them together. I use a lot of these small bar clamps that come in real handy for holding assemblies together. Like when I glue block halves together and things like that, I clamp them all nice and tight. And uh, that's about it. The uh, mud flap assembly that goes on the rear of the chassis, uh, I'm not going to put that on until after I get the rear axles assembled. And uh, I think the way this is going to go is I'll get most of the chassis assembled, paint it, detail it, and then when I get that far, I think I'm going to mount the grill uh, to the chassis early. And uh, I also wanted to show you that uh, if you don't strip the chrome off of this inner lip uh, on both sides, um, this, this cab is going to fall off all the time if you tip it, so uh, make sure that you go bare plastic. I, my opinion, anyways, is that uh, that's how I'm going to do it, and uh, that'll give me a chance to line the cab one final time before I get into finishing and painting everything. So that's about where I'm at on this kit. Uh, I'm just getting things prepped for uh, surgery on Tuesday and then I'll probably be th three or four days before I'll be doing much of anything if it goes the way the last knee went and uh, then uh, I might be able to come out and work a little bit uh, that's about all I have thanks for watching uh, like and subscribe thank you